Greg Doyle has a new picture, he has a new blog name, he is a new man. Welcome to you. This is Doyle Rules. Glad to have you with us, Lauren Shahadi. Greg Doyle, our national columnist on the other line, you have a new picture. How do you think the viewers are going to like it? Oh, they're going to love it because it looks like me. Uh, but I'm, I've got the same old body, but luckily for me, that body was pretty good. So I, everything, it's all good right now. Viewers, send your comments to hate mail. He will respond accordingly. Please you'll send be, me anything you want to send me. <laughs> you will be a good sport about that, I know. But your boy, LeBron, wasn't the most fabulous sport when the Magic took care of the Cavs. I don't really like to speculate on how athletes act because he's a competitor. LeBron, you know, had a lot of expectations for him, and he was upset. How did you, th how did you think that worked out for him? Well, he's getting scolded a whole lot by the nanny nanny boo boo portion of the media, which unfortunately is most of us. But I think the post game handshake is just one of the most empty, empty gestures going. It's kind of like bringing orange peels to your third graders' baseball game. I mean, are they going to dive at the orange peels? No, we brought orange peels because our parents brought orange peels and their parents brought orange peels. Well, the post game handshake, there's no play. I mean, it. it if it happens, great. If it doesn't happen, it's really not a sign of disrespect. It means he was hurting because he lost. Okay, you've given your opinion on how he acted. What about his future? Contract extension, waiting? What do you think he should do? I think he's. I think he is going to wait to see what Cleveland does to improve the, the team around him. He wants to be a, a global, not just national, but a global icon. I think he wants to be bigger than Michael Jordan and Tiger Woods. I'm not saying it can happen, but that's what he wants. And he knows that it, that is easier to make happen in New York than Cleveland, but I think he'd like to make it happen in Cleveland, but he's not going to stick around and be this one-man show forever. So, and, and forever, unfortunately, for Cleveland lasts one year because they've got one year to show him we will get you help, or when he becomes a free agent, he'll have to make a decision. And I know how you feel about the Cavs' big men, so maybe they need to stock up on that side. Yeah, and I don't know what's out there. Apparently there's not a whole lot out there in, in free agency, and – and, of course, in the draft, they're drafting into the first round, so it's not going to happen that way. So Ferry will have to make some trades. And I don't even know how it works out with salary cap. But it's, not, it's easier said than done making trades in the NBA. There's all kinds of financial ramifications. So I'm not even sure he can get it done, but he's going to have to or risk the very real possibility of LeBron, who I really think wants to stay in Cleveland. I think he wants to win a title in Cleveland and be this northern Ohio icon uh, forever, but I also know he wants to be a global icon, and the two, you know, th those are two different uh, factions warring inside his own head. I agree with you. I think he wants to stay in Cleveland, but he definitely wants to win, and that definitely outweighs him. That will, uh, his future is uncertain. Let's see, maybe he will become a coach, but then in your eyes, he wouldn't matter. Why? Because I don't know if you knew this, Greg, but coaches in the NBA, according to you, do not matter. They're useless. Uh, look, an NBA game is nothing but a bunch of one-on-one -on -one or isolation plays, as they're called, to, to give it some big coach speak term, which really means one-on-one. -on -one. Or they do the pick and roll, which people have been doing for 70 years. That's all they do in the NBA, and they don't play zone defense. There's, there's, really, there's very little coaching, and it happens right before our eyes when during a timeout, Phil Jackson ignores his team for all but about 10 seconds, and he ducks in the huddle real quick, and I mean every time he does this, he ducks in the huddle real quick, says a sentence or two, and sends them on their way. Why? Because they don't want to be coached. Well, then why? Why does Phil Jackson have so much success? Because talent trumps all, and he's had talent? Oh, absolutely. Why did Red Arback win nine NBA titles? Because he had Hall of Fame guys coming off the bench. Phil Jackson had the best player of all time, Jordan, plus Pippen's really good. And then he had Kobe and Shaquille O'Neal. Talent makes the coach, not vice versa. This is not a chicken or egg thing. I think we all know the chicken came first and the chicken was seven feet tall. It's like you making your boss look good, right? You make Swanee look good, right? That's what I do. I don't even try <laughs> anymore. It just happens. Oh, I hope they're watching. Let's transition now from coaches in the NBA to coaches in college, just the cheating that's going on in the NCAA um, as it is. Is there any way to stop it, slow it down? Uh, no, there's there's really not. I mean, I mean, you can slow it down, I guess, by by continuing to to investigate. But but good heavens, the problem is there's no subpoena power for the NCAA. So basically, they can hear about cheating, but if all they can do is ask people, "Did you cheat?" Um, it's really hard to confirm stuff because no one has to tell you the truth because you're not going to jail for perjury. So I'm afraid that we're stuck with cheating. I mean, we just are. It, it, that's a bad thing to have to hear. It's a terrible thing to have to say, but we are stuck with cheating, and cheating is a lot more rampant in college basketball than, than I think the average person wants to believe. Just like steroids in baseball are a lot more rampant than what the Mitchell Report found out. 
So from cheating to arrest, what is the sports world coming to, right? Uh, 24 Gator football players now arrested. And Coach Meyer, when you look at him, he's a disciplinary, but the numbers kind of don't prove that. Yeah, not at all. And, and the thing is, is that the, the Gators, the Florida Gator football players are the biggest guys on campus, the biggest guys in town. And unless their head coach is going to sternly, and I mean seriously make it clear that you can't behave like that, these things will continue to happen because those guys walk around Gainesville like they're gods. And the problem is Urban Meyer has kind of become one himself. Money is short all over the place for colleges as well as everybody else. And yet Florida rolls along raising money, raising $1.5 billion for their current fund called the Florida Tomorrow Campaign. And one of the big reasons why Florida can raise money in a time when no school can raise money is because there's all this pride for the football team. So Urban Meyer is basically the most powerful person in town. If he's not going to tell his team no ifs, ands, or buts, you will stop behaving like this, the administration is not going to tell him either. So I think Urban Meyer has to be the one to tell him, look, the next guy gets arrested, I don't care who you are, you're off the team. I don't care who you are, you are off the team if you get arrested. You are a former Florida Gator. Were you arrested in Gainesville? <laughs> no, but I got a speeding ticket once. And the Urban Meyer would say, no, life. Greg Doyle, you are off the writing squad, huh? Yeah, kick me off. If I'd been if I'd been part of that mess and I was the one that got arrested again, kick me off. But it takes more than a speeding ticket to get arrested. I mean, getting arrested is a major deal. There, there aren't a whole lot of people in this world that can say, yeah, I've been arrested. We've all gotten tickets. But people don't get arrested very often. And 24 and four years, I mean, that's an entire recruiting class. That's humiliating. You were arrested. I looked you up, Greg Doyle, for Greg Doyle. I'm Lauren Shahadi. We'll talk soon.